welcome to our online weekly worship. This week, we're thinking about and celebrating the harvest. The sun is shining. My glasses have gone a bit dark. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. And it's lovely time to share worship together. My name is Liz Harris. I'm one of the ministers in the Falmouth and Gwen Up Methodist Circuit. Let's begin with a word of prayer. God of the harvest, we thank you for the land, for gardeners and farmers, for produce grown and shared. Help us to reach out, to pray, to listen, to support and help, to love our neighbours as ourselves and honour you in all things. Amen. celebrated their harvest and had a lovely time together and one of the things that they had in their service was a traditional Cornish folk dance celebrating the harvest. Terry Jones brought that dance and we're going to see a little bit of that now.
in the St. Day Chapel a few weeks ago. In uh, one of our groups together, our midweek group, we celebrated something of harvest by writing together a harvest psalm. I'm going to read the words of that psalm to you now. A psalm for harvest. Praise him for the sunshine and harvest of the sea, for warmth and water to grow food and your creation of the universe. Thank you for the seasons, the morning rain and evening stars. You give us creation in heaven and on earth. We thank you, Lord, for the wonder of creation, for mountains, lakes and beauty everywhere, for creatures great and small and flowers in season. We praise you, God, for all your love and care. All around this season of harvest, right across our circuit and beyond, of course, Chapels and congregations and communities have been celebrating harvest, celebrating God's wonderful creation in all sorts of different ways. Harvest services, suppers, lunches, caring for God's creation, the environment, our world around us, working towards being an eco-church and an eco circuit, speaking out when things are not right against oppression and injustice, working with our friends and colleagues, our communities, supporting our neighbours, praying for those in need and helping out practically where we can. All of this is part of our worship and adoration of God, creator God, who loves us. We're going to look at some of the photographs of things that have been happening right across our circuit in this time. We see the fruitful harvest of Gracious God provides, and how in His abundance our needs are satisfied. He sends the yearly seasons and feeds with joy and care. Your light and living water poured out for all to share. Lord of all the harvest, creation brings you praise. So we will join the joyful song of everything you made.
let's pray. Maker God, thank you for the wonderful world in which we live. For mountains and oceans, plants, animals and birds and fish and insects. We praise you for your creation. The earth and the sun and the moon and the stars. All things seen and unseen. Teach us, Lord, to be good stewards, to care to think, to act. Forgive us for the damage that we do in thought and word and deed. Draw us closer to you. Give us a harvest of faith. Fill us with your spirit and enable us to love as you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's share together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's hear from our gospel reading today, which comes from Luke's gospel, chapter 18, the first eight verses. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not lose heart. He said... In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God Grant justice to his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night. Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth?
our gospel reading today. We hear Jesus telling one of his stories, one of his parables. He often did that as part of his teaching and he used those parables to make a point to help us to listen and to understand something about the kingdom of God. This parable is quite a strange one. It's about a mean, disrespectful judge. This is not an image or a picture of God. This is a picture of somebody who disrespects God and disrespects other people, someone with power. The point of Jesus's story is that if even this hard, mean, horrible man finally listens to the woman who's bringing her petition to him because of her persistence, then how much more will our Heavenly Father, how much more will God listen to us, his children, when we bring our prayers to him, when we cry to him, when we come in frustration and anguish sometimes, when we bring our stories of injustice, oppression, of things not going well, of unfairness in our own lives. The woman in the story kept on coming to the mean judge and he heard her out. He did something about her situation because of her persistence. God invites us to come to him in prayer, not just when things are going well, but when things are going wrong, to come regularly, persistently, to speak to him, to tell him our situations. Jesus uses that story to tell us something about the kingdom of God. He uses the story to look forward to a time where there will be justice, where oppression will be lifted, where things will no longer be unfair, where people will no longer need to cry out to God in anguish because of their suffering. When the justice of the kingdom of God will be fully known, fully realised in our world. We look forward to that time and Jesus, the Prince of Peace himself, ends that parable with a challenge. When the Son of Man returns in glory, he says, will he find faith on earth? Will he find faith in you and me, in our congregations, in our communities? Will he find faith? It's quite a challenging question, isn't it? Because our natural instinct is to say, yeah, of course, I go to church regularly. I'm full of faith. <laughs> it's quite easy to be full of faith when things are going well. It's less easy to be full of faith when things are really hard, really challenging, when we face unfairness and injustice, when we switch on the news and see some of the terrible things that happen in our world. When we want to cry out, Lord, where are you in this situation? Jesus promises to return. Jesus promises to bring God's kingdom in all its fullness. And at this harvest time, it's a good time to ask, what has God planted in me and in you? We love sharing the harvest. We've seen some great photos We've had some good harvest lunches and suppers, people gathering together, people collecting to give to food banks and local food larders, people supporting their neighbours, people celebrating, dancing, singing, all sorts. And that's all wonderful. But part of our harvest is the harvest that's in us. As we pray to God, as we ask him to plant seeds of faith in us, and to enable us to share the good news of the kingdom so that those seeds of faith are planted in other people too. As we nurture those seeds of faith, as we watch it grow in us and in others, 
as we encourage that growth, as we strip away uh, some of the weeds, some of the not so good things that grow in our lives. Will he find faith in us? God calls us to speak up and speak out, to say when things are not right, to challenge injustices, to do something, to put our faith into action. That's a, a mark of some maturity in us, of those seeds of faith growing in us as we put our faith into action as we speak up for those who are unfairly treated as we help out those who need a hand as we say some of these things in our world are not right this is not okay god calls us to be persistent in our prayer to say that over and over again to bring it to him over and over again and to listen as he guides us and shows us how to respond. So friends, in our prayers, in our life, let us not lose heart as Jesus encourages us. Don't lose heart, but rather let that seed of faith planted in us grow and flourish as we celebrate the harvest, as we look at God's wonderful creation. Let's also pray that he will strengthen us as we learn to be persistent in prayer and in meaningful action. As we look forward to the return of Jesus. As we pray, Lord, may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as in heaven. Plant those seeds of faith in us, Lord, and help us, enable us to plant those seeds of faith in others. Nurture us. Let our faith grow and honour you. Amen. joining me for today's worship. Always good to worship together. Have a good week and may God go with you in everything that you do.
our blessing. God of harvest, teach us to pray, to speak out, to trust in you. Give us a harvest of faith. Bless us and remain with us this day and always. In Jesus' name, amen.